So uh, in the inside, we got number 23, Griffin, or whatever his name is. Uh, he's really athletic, and uh, he's, he has good timing with the rebounds, and he knows where the ball is going to bounce at. So uh, we just <clears throat> we just focused in on that and try to block guys out and uh, go get the loose balls. How big was Vincent today? Oh, he was good. What are you talking about? Leo. Leo? Yeah. Leo, I mean, that's Leo. Leo's good. Like, we know. <laughs> he's a gamer, man. Anything within a three foot of the basket. I mean, I'm sure he had another one. Seems like it did. No, no, he did it. He only had one. He always he always some shots. I'll let you guys go. Terry, it's hard to put away a team, but you grew up 16 with 16 minutes to go, and, and that's when they really pushed out. Why were they so hard to put away tonight? I, I think I need to tell you guys this again, and I think I need to tell all our fans again, because our, obviously our players aren't getting it, and I don't, I don't think we, as a group collectively we are. There are no more easy games on our schedule. There are no more easy games. Everybody we're playing from here on out is really good. And 
we told our guys that at halftime. I asked them over and over and over, do you think these guys are going away? And I said, they've got whom I consider a very well-respected coach coaching them. I knew Lofton had had a tough half, five turnovers, and I knew he was struggling, but I knew he would come back and play really well. I knew we would struggle keeping Griffin off the glass, and I knew that they had a couple of guards that had been getting hot, specifically number one. We knew that he had started to shoot the basketball better, and we just knew that it would be tough. Now, with that being said, we didn't turn the ball over in the first half, but we turned it over in the second half. But our turnovers were stupid turnovers. They were just bizarre turnovers where we just dribbled to them and they lay it up. And, and compound that with not making free throws, I think it made it difficult. But with that being said, we just kept telling our guys, stay in the game, stay in the game. And when we went down twice, on two different occasions, two players stepped up and made three big plays. Sean Lloyd made two incredible plays today. Both threes had to go. And both threes, I think, were right after he turned the ball over and I was getting ready to pull him out of there. So I think he shot it so he could get one shot in before I got him out of there. Uh, and Armand hit a huge three as well, huge three. So the plays at the end of the game were Teak Bowl contest, unbelievable two great shots. May have even altered them. Armand comes up with two rebounds. Um, Sean O'Brien is just calling out everything defensively. And I thought Michael Rodriguez today, with the exception of him getting to the basket and making a few bad decisions, 10 assists and one turnover, I, I just, that's hard, to, that's hard to beat. You already talked about it a little bit, but it seems like Armand's really growing into the role of savoring that big game moment. Yeah, I, I, the, the challenging thing for me with Armand right now is that I want him to be better than what he is. And uh, I want to speed it up, and sometimes you just can't do that. But I, I've told you guys this before. I think there's a lot of guys on our team that can play professional one day, but there's no question in my mind. Armand's one of those guys that if he will just wake up every day with that passion and desire, I think this kid's going to be paid to play basketball one day. I believe that. That's, that's my vision for him, uh, certainly after he gets his degree. And you talked about your seniors want the ball you know, late, but Armand looked like he wanted the ball today too. Yeah, I thought he did, and I, I thought it was uh, – I just I thought it was out of normal for him to miss those free throws. I'm, I'm, here's how I do free throws. Who shoots technicals? The guy that shoots the best free throws from the line. Right now, Armand had the best percentage. Next week, it'll probably be uh, Leo. Leo, I would think right now. Um, no, I'm sorry. Mike Rodriguez now. Because Leo didn't make his free throws today either. Yeah, well, he did three for four. But uh, I think we're, you know, Mike Reese asked me on the – Air if I'm concerned about our free throw shooting. I'm not because I think we're a good shooting team. And uh, we <clears throat> made them when we had to today. We struggled on the boards most of the game, but again, we're coming back to our mind. I think you had four of the five rebounds in the last minute, maybe minute and a half. I agree, Les. We, we struggled in the first half. Second half, we did a decent job. We out-rebounded them in the second half by three. Um, I've told you guys, th that's going to be our Achilles heel this year is we're not going to win a lot of games rebounding. But what we did today, specifically in the second half, we were down nine at half. And we talked about we've got to out-rebound in the second half. And our guys accepted that challenge. The only thing that I'm really – the only thing that I am disappointed in right now is that we lost a little bit of our momentum and we started trading baskets. And we got to get out of that mode. This is a – With the exception of Arkansas, Arkansas made nine of 11 threes. So I think I'm even going to throw it in. I think this is the worst defense we've played this year yet. And because we got comfortable at half. Just can't, do, <coughs> can't hold somebody to 27 points in the first half and then come out and give them 43. You can, you can get out rebounded, but do you look at anything second chance points, you know, trying to defend after that? Or is that just kind of. That was the biggest deal. Or? That was the biggest deal, Todd, in the first half, second chance points. That's why the game was even close. When it went from 16 to 9, it happened because of offensive rebounds. Uh, they only scored seven points in transition. I think they had nine off the second chance points. And you can't do that. And we knew that. We knew going in, Griffin was a, was a man child. Uh, guys, I, I'm just telling you, they're, they're a good team. 
that, that's a really – I think they're an NCAA tournament basketball team. I think they're going to win the SWAC. I think they're going to upset people down the stretch. And um, if you're not ready to play these guys, ooh, you're going to get beat. Is, is, is it just a matter of rising to the occasion and getting all those rebounds and we'll have some things? I hope so, Les. I hope so. Got to find a way. Um, I mean, we're challenging them in those timeouts. Got to get a stop. Got to get the rebound. Got to create space. Got to got to get got to get tougher. Uh, we really weren't even talking about offense, to be honest. Um, we're just talking about getting stops. You switched on some of the ball screens to keep Delaney Robinson kind of out there. How big of that? How big of that was your defensive game plan today? Uh, you know, yeah, Todd. We changed. Uh, we did three different defenses today. <coughs> And in our ball screen coverage, we did four different ball screen coverages. So I thought we were, um, yeah, and that was part of the game plan. Tried to keep them. First half, our ball screen coverage was really good. Um, second half, we didn't get up to the level of the ball much at all. They were able to get down the downhill on us, and uh, we didn't do a great job. Mike made some adjustments. They started back screening the ball screener, and uh, we knew that was coming. We'd worked on it, but it gave us a little bit of trouble. And they did it on the fly. I was really impressed how he coached the game today. He caused us some trouble just by doing that. It seems like with your starting five, you know, you got five guys who any given day can, you know, score a lot of points. So what does it mean to have that many people so that when someone like Sean today doesn't have his best offensive game, the other four and even Sean Lloyd he's coming off the bench or they're able to help pick him up? I think this is the most impressive stat I can get you. We got five guys averaging double figures, all five starters. And then the next guy is Sean Lloyd at 5.8. I, I just, my dream has always been to coach a team that all five guys average double figures. And I know it's short into the season, but I love that. I think that's a valid point. I think it's, I think it's huge. Because guys are going to have off nights, somebody else has got to pick up the slack. But, man, it's fun. And why do you have 17 assists and nine turnovers? Because five guys are averaging double figures. And if, if we don't turn the ball over like we did in the second half, it's pretty impressive. Uh, Leo, how much did you challenge him to, you know, if he's not, if they're guarding the three, to take it to the basket? He had three assists tonight. Talked about three for one, four to two. Yeah, I thought the reason th uh, Leo didn't play there at the stretch, obviously he got in foul trouble, but we just felt like defensively we needed somebody else to guard the basketball a little bit better. And, uh, but I thought what Leo did today, uh, Todd, what did he do from the three? One for three. And he's three for four from the line. And I just think his shot, his shot looks like it's getting ready to come. But what you brought up was we've talked about, if you're not scoring from the perimeter, find a way to get downhill, find a way to get to the free throw line. And, you know, getting four free throws today is pretty good. For a three-point shooter, when you shoot four free throws, that's good. What do you look at going to Louisville? Do you want me to be honest with that answer? Or, uh, uh, I watched them play Purdue, and I didn't sleep that night at all. You should watch them play Wichita. I watched that one too. Um, and then I didn't sleep because of Wichita. Uh, but uh, you know what, guys? Let's lace them up. Let's go. Let's lace them up. Let's go. I mean, we're going we're gonna to have to make perimeter shots. You know that. I know that. The length is going to be something that will be extremely challenging to us. But we'll put together a game plan, and we've got nothing to lose. We're going to go in there, and we're going to play. It'll be the first time that I've coached in this program that we play in front of 21, 22,000 people. And it'll be, a, it'll be a great opportunity. Is that politically correct, Mark? I actually, I don't mind telling I'm looking forward to it. I've done it. I've done it before. I took a team in there to play to go to Madison Square Garden for the Final Four of the NIT. I went in there with Co Coach Patino and them, and uh, uh, we were at uh, the old Freedom Hall. And, uh, man, I was – it was awesome. It was awesome. Boy, that's basketball country. They love it. Every possession, offense and defense, they're yelling. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.